name is Taryn and thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Nicole Flower House. I have some really fun and exciting things happening today. My composting worms are going to arrive this afternoon. I need to get their bedding set up. I already have their bin put together and it's buried in one of my garden beds right here behind me. I'm going to be using shredded paper as the bedding, but I'll just need to put that in the bin and get it a little bit wet so the worms don't dry out. They also have a worm blanket that I need to soak. I'm going to use rainwater that I've collected in my barrels for the worm blanket so there's no chlorine or fluoride in it to hurt the worms. Here is my shredded paper. I've been collecting this for quite a while. It's mostly just mail and scrap paper. have a coconut core flower pot and some egg cartons that I'm going to get wet and rip up and add to the bin as well. I did have to do a fair amount of digging to get this sub pod into the garden box. I did a lot of things to these peppers that they tell you not to do. I disturbed the roots. I buried the stems. But we'll see how these peppers do. They look like they're doing okay. Now, while we're waiting on the worms to arrive, let's go look at some things in the garden. We've been getting a ton of rain. Let's check out the rain gauge. We're at two inches of rain over the past several days here. This bed is full of peppers and eggplants and this lovely weed right here. I'll need to come in here and get this out. There it is. See you later, buddy. Strawberry Hill Rose still looks really good. It hasn't rebloomed yet. I think the sweet peas are coming to an end soon. They're very pretty, but they're not in good enough shape for me to cut these and give to clients. But I certainly will cut these and put them on my own kitchen table. They're still very beautiful. I'm just not getting much vase life out of them right now. The kale on the end looks good. This tall marigold right here should be blooming soon. I did prune the calendula back last week and it's looking really nice. There's still some blooms I need to take out, but this bed continues to produce a ton of blooms. These dill plants are doing good. I don't have any flowers on them right now. You can still use them for their foliage, but I really like when they have the big sprays of flowers on top. This trellis right here has really sunken with all the rain and is falling over. But in the corner here, I have my opal basil and my cucumbers are starting to take off. And here's another one of those tall varieties of marigolds that I will be using for cutting. These sweet peas did not survive our storm last night. We're getting into some high temperatures, high heat, so these just need to come out. But next to these guys are my volunteer dahlias and I'm seeing a lot of buds on them. I'm really excited for this. This is really early to have dahlias for me. I've never had any this early. This dahlia is laying down. This one had some damage in the wind, so you really do need to support your dahlias. I didn't get to that yet, so hopefully that one's okay. The onions are doing well. The stock have survived the storm. Here's one with a bud on it. I'm getting lucky with all this right now. These really do need to have netting on them. But look how pretty.
I've decided that I'd rather use this space for something else than hanging on to these terrible looking potato plants. It's hard because I have new growth and healthy looking leaves coming off, so maybe I'll give them a hard prune in a couple more weeks, I don't know. Next to those are eucalyptus. I think these really come into full maturity more in the fall, that they'll kind of look small like this and really take off later on in the season. I haven't grown eucalyptus before, so it's a learning experience for me. Here are some cool weather flowers, snapdragons. This one's pretty, it's a nice wine color. This one's a little, just about a few days off from being good to cut. You want a few of the blooms to be open. Like this one might be a little far along. You could probably include that in arrangement if you included other ones to take its place like this one once it died off. Looks like I have a lot of blooms on the Orlea. I cut a lot of the Dara last week, so it's still working on its next flush. Here's one that'll bloom soon. I think this right here is just a variety of baby's breath that I have. I'm gonna look through my seeds and see if I can figure this one out. This rose here, I pruned the black spot off of last week. So it looks to be doing okay. It has new growth. It has buds on it. The foliage is doing much better. There's still a few here and there, like here's one. Just take that off, but it looks pretty good. Now this potato bed looks just as terrible as the other one, with the exception of a few. What's mostly in here right now is weeds, but I wanted to show you this. This vine right here is something called Love in a Puff, which I planted last year and it has reseeded itself. So I'm gonna let this go because it's really pretty. This even looks like a zinnia. This bed has become wild. Snow Puff Cosmos. I'm really torn what to do about these. They're not healthy, but they're not dead enough for me to want to cut them down. I think what I'll do this week since we're getting all this rain, it's a really good time to sow seeds. So I may just plant some seeds right beside these. These zinnias are kind of in the same boat. This one is starting to branch and kind of look, get some healthier foliage on it. Same with this one. So I may just be being impatient. Look at this. This is a weed. That's insane. My pathways need some serious intervention. The tomato rows are still doing really well. I just love seeing all the fruits on here and everything growing so nice and tall. I did some tying up and pruning on these rows also. Ooh, and it looks, looks like I've got some fruit starting to ripen. Look at that. That shouldn't be too much longer. This spot in the garden is becoming my favorite. It's just so pretty. The Desdemona rose right here in the front and it has a ton of blooms right now. This is this rose's first year, so these are pretty small, but each year they'll be bigger. And this is that cheerful little zinnia patch. And on the opposite side of the zinnias, I have peppers. These peppers are much bigger than they were last week. This zinnia is beautiful. Look at the color on that. And this one is just the perfect pink. Oh, I love that one. Here is another dahlia, and it has buds on it. This basil right here is starting to go to flower, which for me is good, since I like to use these in my floral arrangements. If you were going to use this for food, you'd want to pinch these off, but look at these flower spikes. And this foliage smells so good. It looks like I'm going to have flowers on the dill in this bed soon. This rose right here that made the miraculous recovery has rebloomed. 
These zinnias and celosia have probably doubled in size since last week. These are chrysanthemums that I have saved from last year. I wasn't sure if they would survive our winter, but they're looking very green and lush now. So I can't wait until the fall because I have no idea what varieties these are. So it'll be a surprise. This is the time of year I wait for all winter long. When the garden is green, it's pretty much wild because I can't even keep up with the production. I love looking back on these videos during the winter time because the life that is the garden right now is just something that's hard to remember when your garden is resting. I now have some blooms on these gumfrinas. The dahlia tubers are looking really good. This is a really good example. This one needs pinched, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take that right off the middle. This one here, better late than never. This one's pretty tall. We're still gonna pinch it. I definitely wanna keep you guys posted on all of these. This is from one of my mystery Wizard of Oz dahlias. I do love this though, it's such a pretty flower. Okay, after much waiting and anticipation, it's five o'clock in the afternoon and the worms have finally come. I just saw the FedEx truck pull up, so let's go get them. Looks like there was one casualty so far. This poor little guy. I'm gonna put him in the bin just in case he's sleepy. It says they're dehydrated. Okay, here they are, they're in here. Now when I opened the bag, I couldn't really see the worms moving around at all, but as you can tell, they did liven up as soon as I dumped them into their bedding. The directions say don't spread them out. They might be tangled up and dehydrated, so to just let them find their own way. Now the directions also say to sprinkle some warm water on these guys, so I'm going to put some rain water. It's not super, super warm, but it's not cold either. And I'd rather use rain water than water from the sink. They also dehydrate the worms during shipping to help keep them from freezing or overheating and from being too active. So they will liven up the more time they have in their little sub pod. are the warm blankets that I've been soaking in water that came with the sub pod. All right, that is it for the worms. They're all tucked into their new home and that really wasn't that bad. I thought it was gonna be pretty creepy and scary, but it was okay. And I opened the bag, no worms were trying to escape. They were all down in the peat moss. It wasn't really a big deal. If I had to do it again, 
I probably would, not gonna lie. I'll definitely keep you updated on how the worms are doing. I can't feed the worms yet. You're supposed to wait about a week or so for them to settle in, but I will record my first feeding and share it with you guys on next week's video. Now, if you're interested in the sub pod or the worms, I will link both of those down below so you can check out for yourself. The reason I like the sub pod compared to other worm bins is because the worms are free to come and go as they need to. This means that if you provide an environment that's not safe for them or inhabitable, they'll just leave instead of dying inside your worm bin and then they can come back if they want to. Also, the worms will build their population and multiply as time goes on and they will self-adjust to how much you're feeding them. That's why Subpod recommends a feeding schedule to start out feeding them lightly and then you gradually build as their population builds. Well, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate having you here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and the best way that you can support my channel is to subscribe and share with all your gardening and flower loving friends. See you next time, bye. Okay, little buddies. I hope you like your new home in there. I'm so excited about all my new pets. I have 2,000 new pets. 2,000 worms went into the bucket. 2,000 worms. <laughs>